what is happening everyone welcome back to the channel kg is back back with another upload bit of transfer news a bit of opinion as well that i want to share in this one courtesy of a comment from a, a viewer of the channel um but before i get into that of course please hit the like on the video subscribe if you're not subscribed drop your comments on anything discussed below a uh, big shout out to john abbott and jim jones for the super thanks on last night's videos as, obviously there was two streams yesterday as, as everyone knows thank you for everyone who tuned in and thank you for the super thanks donators for the continued support um listen let's just get straight into it as we as i like to do on these uploads but yeah tyler adams the steam and the noise is, is picking up mike mcgrath who's who's for me is one of the best in in terms of breaking news and everything else like that he first said it this morning that um, Chelsea are set to bid for Tyler Adams. It seems that all the talks that have been going on in the last week or so have now mounted to probably a yes from Tyler because you don't a club doesn't speak to a player and then put in a bid if the if they know that the player is not going to come. It just doesn't work like that. So it does seem like this one is picking up steam. Looks like it will be the twenty million release clause, and it was then um, supported by Fabrizio Romano. Um, in terms of Chelsea opening talks for Tyler Adams. So it looks like we're going to lose him, uh, even with his injury, which is something I did say can happen with certain players as long as the, the medical goes okay with no long-standing um, damage to that, that injured body part. And for me, this is a loss, but it does seem like we're having to bring in money in order to spend. So as long, let me make this clear, as long as I, we see this 20 million reinvested back into the first team, I've I've got no issues with it at this time, as long as we now get another defensive midfielder. Because listen, there's going to be a whole load of comments, no matter what I say here, that Ampadu's a better player. Ampadu can do this. That's all well and fine, people, but you still need another option in there. Am Ampadu will not complete 46 games this season. So when he goes out, what are, what are people going to say then? Who plays there then? So we do need to now, with Tyler Adams looking seemingly like he's off, we do need to get another defensive midf midfielder in. And, and uh, this came up on the on the watch long yesterday about them being two different players. And there's nothing wrong with that. You do get two different kind of players in the same position. You don't have to have the exact same. Tyler Adams is, is definitely more of a breakup play, maybe more of a simple passer. But it's just like I made the example with an attacking midfielder. Sometimes you get attacking midfielders that love to pass it, love to thread it through. Other ones, you they love to shoot. You know, you get it's still the same attacking midfielder, but they they do separate things, and that's the same with Tyler and Efa. They've got separate attributes, so I'm not sure why people keep on comparing the two. But we will now have to go and shop for another defensive midfielder because Farker even said himself, for anyone that's doubting that, that he needs some more steel in that midfield, and we already had that with Tyler ready to come back. With him looking likely that he's going to leave, we now need to replace that too. So it just adds to the shopping list that we need, but. Yeah, I mean, on, on reg in regards to the 20 million fees, way, way too low, especially when I talk about somebody who's going to be, you know, Southampton are trying to keep hold of. It's way too low, but we're at the mercy of the relegation release clause. There's nothing we can do about it. So, again, past mistakes of the owners are, are haunting us today, but we're going to have to, you know, do the best with it. And I'm sure the 49ers will try their best to do it. But time is running out, man. we got like three weeks left of the, the transfer window need to get moving on this one so yeah we'll look out for this later this week but it does seemingly look like tyler adams is off let me know in the comments what you think um and please if there's anyone that says we've got ampadu now you, you're gonna make my head hurt because what what do we do then for a backup option please let me know let me know though um something else that came up and i do and i do want to point this out and, and shout out to michael evans who left the comment uh in regards to this yesterday uh, and it's why I've included him on the on the thumbnail today because it is quite a big thing for me. It's something that I've mentioned over the years anyway, but it, it was prevalent against again yesterday in in yesterday's game versus Cardiff. Uh, Michael Evans said, I, "I couldn't believe Aylin came out for the second half. Was disappointed with Farker for leaving him on." Now, some people might think that is dramatic or something like that, but it's really not because we, we we've seen this with patterns before, even with Bielsa. We will go from Bielsa to now, where it doesn't matter what certain players do. They get extended. They get chance after chance after chance. I don't even know how many chances Luke Ayling's on now, but he still stayed the course yesterday. Now, listen, Yelda was, was 
Farker was well within his right to substitute Yelda. That's not the issue because Yelda did have a stinker yesterday. He was definitely at fault for that second goal. Just wasn't strong enough in the tackle. Didn't believe in himself enough for me. But Ailing was a part of that second goal and he was certainly at fault for the first one. But yet he still came out and even wore the uh, vice cap, you know, the captain's armband once Cooper went down. And, and for me, it would just be a thing of if you're going to make a change with the defense being as bad as it was at 2 0 down, you could have put Byron on at right back. You could have done that and then taken off one of the center halves, either one, by the way, for, for Charlie Creswell. You could have done that, but it was the cop out. It was the easy choice. And we've seen it so many times previously where the manager just, they, no matter what, they'll, they won't substitute or, or, or not start the, the older guard or, or Jack Harrison. I'll include him in this as well because he he's quite a big part of that as well. They, they always go for the easy option. You know, as soon as Somerville or someone has a, a quiet game, you, you're back on the bench. You know, we, we, you know, at a point last, was it last season when we lost to Brentford 5-2? Or was it the year before? I can't remember which one it was now. We've taken so many beatings, I can't remember them. But, you know, Urente did have a bad run of games, you know, no doubt about it. And he got replaced by Cooper, who then himself proceeded to have a bad run of games. And I always remember when I, I say start Cooper because it's very rare. And I remember saying he should start against Fulham because it's a physical battle with Mitrovic. Mitrovic had him for dinner. It, it was it was light work for Mitrovic that day. and But he still continued to get starts no matter what. And, uh, and listen, these guys have gone now, but Robin Cock did mention something about wanting to be more of a leader. I mean, it's laughable. But the point in, in what he's trying to say there is that it just seems to be like, no matter what happens here, there's some people that are just untouchable. And these guys are really not untouchable. They shouldn't be anyway. And I just hope that Daniel Farker doesn't fall into the trap that so many managers have fallen into and not replacing the the players that aren't playing well, even no matter who they are. I mean, and, and I mentioned Jack Harrison earlier because that happened with him where we've seen Somerville, Nonto on the bench. But Jack Harrison, quiet game after quiet game after quiet game, no matter what, he'd start the next game. And it, for me, it is a big issue at the football club for me. Um, and it obviously, see, seemingly so with Michael. And I just hope that Daniel Farker is a little bit stronger with that. We'll see once the options get a little bit stronger. We'll see at the end of the transfer window. Obviously, he, he did mention about Byron's fitness. Probably going to see Byron start. But it'd be very disappointing for me to see Byron start and then it's ailing again on the right instead of giving Yelda maybe another go unless we sign a left back in, be quick before that. That would be the key one. That would be great if we can sign the left back before, put Byron on the right for now until Drama gets back. But I don't see that happening. It, it just seems to be a pattern here at Leeds United. It, it's just something that is going to continue to happen. And, you know, I, and I also think of Yelda as well. You have to think in Yelda's um, case here that, okay, I've made, a, I've made a mistake. I haven't played that well, but I've been hooked at half time. Uh, but the the other the other fullback here has also had a stinker and he's managed to stay on and he's got the captain's armband. For me, it sends out a bad message. It, the, the the correct message would be to to take off the senior play and show that no one is untouchable here. But you know, it's the first game and we'll see how it goes. But I, I completely got what Michael's saying here because I said the same thing on the watch long when, when I saw the players run back out and I saw Cooper, I saw Strauch, I saw Ailing, and I thought, wow. He's taken off Yelda and, and brought on Byram. It's it's a it's an easy move to make for me, too too easy. But we'll see how that goes over the next over the coming days and and sorry coming games. Um, one link that we do have, and I'm just going to touch on this briefly until it it you know it gathers a bit more pace. But I did text, I did message my Cypriotic Greek mate uh, who has given me uh, some info on. And I'm going to try this one time. Pantelis Hatsidikaios. Yeah, let, let's go with that. Let's go with Hatsi for now, okay? Just for just for ease and comfort. But apparently this has been going on for weeks, so this has got nothing to do with um, Liam Cooper's injury. And we, at this point in time when I'm recording this, we still don't know the extent of it, but you can imagine it's going to be a long-term one. Right-footed centre-back, ball-playing centre-back, and I've never, I've never seen him play outside of the games against West Ham, so I'm not the best person to ask. But from from a guy who told me, he said he's decent. Hmm. Yeah, he, uh, he pairs with Mavropanos in the Greek national team, um, who used to play for Arsenal. If you can remember him, he's more of the ball player in that duo, which I do remember in those West Ham games. To be fair, uh, all right with the ball at his feet, uh, plenty of volume, right-footed, um, 
and he averages a lot of touches over the games because he likes to search for the ball and likes to make penetrative passes. So that sounds great, doesn't it? And and that sounds good. He's 26, um, so around a good age. It seems that AZ are holding out for three and a half million for Hatsy. Uh, but I think maybe Leeds are trying to get him a little bit lower with only 12 months on his contract. So again, we'll see if this one's got any legs and see if it and, and once it does, we'll probably go live and talk about it together. The one thing that does concern me, and it's this, and, it, and it, it's hard not to notice it, is this here in his injury history. That that does concern me, not going to lie. Um, 1920, it was a cruciate ligament injury, which is always one of the killers for football players, one of the worst injuries that they can get. He's obviously recovered from it, but then again in 2021, he had another e knee injury where he was out for almost three months. So that is a bit of a concern for me, not going to lie, but obviously the, the medical staff will, will do their due diligence and make sure that there's no underlying issues there if he is to sign. But obviously it is a bit of a concern because we already have an ER full of players. I mean, Liam Cooper is literally going back into the same ward that he was in before. You know, it's like, hello again, Liam. Nice to see you again. You know, they, 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 they didn't even have to change the bedding or nothing. It's Liam Cooper going back into his bed. But it, that is a concern. But look, again, with this one, just like the Tyler Adams one, we'll see if it's got any legs. Now, I just want to finish off on this in regards to Southampton. Uh, Fabrizio here, and a lot of people reported this in regards to Liverpool trying to get Lavia here. Um, they've made a bit of 45 million uh, add-ons included, but Southampton are rejecting it. They're staying put, they're staying steadfast on it, wanting 50 million. And that is how you do business. And I get the feeling we won't know because the 49ers are a little bit quieter in regards to players like Nanto and, and people without relegation release clauses, I should add that they're probably doing the same, but this is how you do it. You don't just accept the first bid or just because it seems good. You, if you feel like the play is worth something to you, you hold out for that. And that is exactly what Southampton are doing. And that is what we've got to do in, in with Nanto. And, and I believe Somerville, I don't know if Somerville's got a, a release clause, but obviously after his game against Cardiff, a lot of people were talking about him. We've got to make sure that we hold out for the values that we deem them worth. So, Southampton are setting the bar here and I like it. And that is how you do business. Doesn't matter how much they cost. Doesn't matter how much Premier League experience they got. Lavia literally had one year and Southampton think that he's, you know, believe he's worth 50 million to him and more power to him, more power to them. So, so again, that is how I expect and want 49ers to do business now. Whereas the previous ownership just used to accept any old bids for players and they'd go cheap as, cheap as chips, didn't they? So that is how you do it. And listen, people, that will be it for this upload. Please hit a like on the video. Drop your comments on anything discussed below and any other thoughts that you may have post the Cardiff game. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, people.